Back on the show, we have Camille Mitchell. She's an award-winning actor and director, and she's here to talk about her latest projects, her roles, her, her acting roles, her directing roles, and a special project that she's currently working on. So welcome back, Camille. Thank you. So nice to see you, Christine. Yeah, so you know what? I want to talk, congratulations on your leading role in Martha's Vineyard. Um, tell us about that. It's a very fun project. I just uh, wrapped in Victoria, which is a beautiful place to film. Oh, it's just heavenly. Uh, so it is, um, it is a film uh, for Hallmark, starring Jesse Metcalf and Sarah Lind. And um, it's uh, great fun. It's called the Martha Vineyard Murder Mysteries. Several of them have already aired. This one hopefully will be coming out this winter. And it's called Ships in the Night. Uh, it's so fun um, to, uh, I haven't done, I've never done a murder mystery. So it was very much fun to be a suspect. And I can't <laughs> say that I'm a very, um, uh, a very uh, snooty art gallery owner. My partner has been murdered. My <laughs> And uh, it's in, it sets, it takes place in Martha's Vineyard. And we found beautiful parts of Victoria that look just like Martha's Vineyard, as you can imagine. We filmed in Oak Bay and around um, some of the lovely areas. And um, so that was great fun. So that's called Martha's Vineyard Murder Mystery Ships in the Night for Hallmark. And Jesse Metcalf actually is, is on this week on Dance, Dancing with the Stars. So. Uh, <laughs> It's just charming to work with. So that was great fun. And I also just uh, wrapped a, a new um, animated series for television. I've never done animation before. It was wonderful. Wow. Um, you know, uh, it's called Sup The Supernatural Academy. And um, it should be on, I think, next fall, fall of 2021. And it's a beautiful animated um, TV series about the supernatural world and the forces within, and I play the most powerful force in the supernatural world, the Elder yeah. Fairy. And it was great fun. I got to do my, you know, how dare you? I got to do all kinds of one. <laughs> I got, I got to do my dream, which was a kind of a, a, a version of Gandalf, right? So that was great fun. And um, it's been, a, you know, aside from COVID and fires and the worst air in the world. Thank goodness we have blue skies today. Uh, it's been work-wise since, since production opened up in July and August. It's been, uh, it's been very exciting. It's been interesting to film in this era, this new world, where when you check in you know, to your um, film set, they take your temperature right away. They ask you a series of questions about, you know, if anyone in your household has COVID, if you've had a fever, if you've had, you know, everything. That's every morning. And of course, everyone is dutifully wearing masks, uh, hand sanitizing like crazy, the um, makeup and hair people. By the way, this crew was just amazing. This crew on, on uh, Ships in the Night were just fabulous. Wonderful, wonderful talented, um, hardworking, professional, just the best. And the director was wonderful, um, Mark Jean. And anyway, um, but it's weird to, um, you know, you're in the makeup trailer, which is ordinarily where, you know, it's the opportunity for everybody across the makeup mirrors to, you know, chat. Mm -hmm. But now you're separated by, you know, um, thick So it was interesting. It was initially... Mm -hmm. As we all were going back into um, working, you know, just how is this going to work? How? But even with the animation, it was a similar thing. Um, you know, you walk into the, the uh, sound studio and, um, you know, you're wearing your mask when you go in, you're hand sanitizing when you go in, and everyone else is doing the same. So, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. just... It, but it's worth it. We really want to get this thing under control. Yeah. You know, I was going to say, like, you know, being an accomplished actor and director, um, you know, how is there a special way to remember your lines? Like going through like a mask and sanitizer, and, you know, how do you focus on what you're no. doing? 
really interesting. I was, um, I was thinking the same thing, especially because it was my first project since COVID started. And so I was determined to not get thrown by anything on set, including all of that. So um, a friend of mine, a wonderful actor, Jerry Trimble, said he'd read an interview with Anthony Hopkins, that Anthony Hopkins does every single one of his lines 200 times before he ever steps on a set uh, out loud and with passion. So I did that. I just, every day when I was hiking with my dog before I went over to Victoria, um, I would just go through all my lines over and over because I was just, and it was, you know what? It, it was actually, not only did it work under the circumstances very well, but I realized that it's another way to, it's another way to approach, approach a part because it really forced you to examine mm -hmm. in, a, in a really thorough way, but, but it anchored everything. So that, that was one way that really, really helped. And the people on set were so supportive and everyone was, you know, every, we were all working together because yeah. all the film production now, we want, we want it all to work. So it stays, it stays it here that nothing gets shut down, um, which would be, you know, a travesty. So everyone's working very hard to keep everything as clean and safe and clean as possible. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, Camille. And I want to hear about the healing powers of Dude. Now, Dude's the dog. <laughs> Dude is the cutest dog. Oh my God, Dude is amazing. Dude is this incredibly trained rescue dog from LA. Um, the trainers uh, were up from LA as well. And it's, it's just, it's a charming show. It's on Netflix. It's about a young boy with social anxiety and mm -hmm. how he deals with his family and school and his relationships with other kids. And quite frankly, with kids going back to school now with COVID, you know, they find some, some nice um, empathetic moments in there um, that will be of comfort to them. It's still on Netflix. It's um, so in order for this young man to, um, uh, to, to find his way, his parents get him a little dog and that's dude. And dude happens to be a talking dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can hear him is this little boy. It's a very it's a lovely I play his Bubba. I play his I own a cafe and I'm a very doting Bubba to this to this boy. Um but it's uh it's it's a charming piece and um we're just waiting to hear if it's going to be have a season two. But um mm -hmm. I think for families especially, thank you. It's it's a it's a really lovely, charming TV show. Wow, I can't wait to see it. I sh I have to see it, and you know, it's a. But but you are a dog lover, right? You you. <laughs> oh, they are my weakness. I do. I've got um, my dog. I've had dogs. Oh my god, I've had dogs, at least half my life. They are, <laughs> they are an important part of my existence. I, I consider my dog Ginger now. She's an LA rescue. I got her six years ago when I was living down there, and um, she's my personal. She's my, been my personal trainer through COVID. She forces me to go out every day on the trails here on the North Shore. And you, you know, Camille, I want to talk about a special project you're working on right now, um, and it's both from abroad.org. Yes. yes, tell yes. us about that. <laughs> um, you know, as I think the world is waiting with bated breath to see the outcome of the presidential election in the United States. We are encouraging Canadians to not let their American friends not vote. And there's a wonderful organization. I know this looks backwards. It's all mirrored. But there's a wonderful organization you can send your American friends to all over the world. Anybody living in Canada, anybody, any American living working, studying in Canada or anywhere in the world can go to votefromabroad.org. Here's the QR. And it is a fabulous organization. It's a one-stop shop. You go online. It'll tell you if you're registered. It'll tell you how to register to vote. Mm -hmm. Get you your ballot. You send it in and it's, it'll even tell you when your state uh, what the deadlines are, everything. Vote from abroad.org. Please tell your American friends they have to vote. 
for the future of our planet, please vote. It's so important. So every Canadian who's working with an American, who's studying with an American, who's living with an American, whatever, please let them know they can vote and they must vote because without voting, we have no democracy. Without, without people casting their vote, and it's so important that, um, that see, I know some people are feeling indifferent, some people don't want to vote, some people whatever. It's, it's, if you never ever vote again, vote in this election. This is the one to vote in. Yes, and how did you get involved, Camille? Um, you know, I've been involved, um, it's funny, after the 2000 election, um, when Al Gore uh, lost to George W. Bush, in that very contra controversial um, ballot count, mm -hmm. that we all remember, I, I just I felt so um, I was so curious. I was so curious about the system. I was so curious about about how you know. As an, I was born in the United States, my home is Canada, um, but I do feel that because the United States is the most powerful country in the world. It, 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 not something I could turn my back on and not be involved on some level. So I've been involved in democratsabroad.org, um, which is also all over the world. Um, but this particular campaign we're working on now, whoever you want to decide to vote for, we're not telling you who to vote, we're just begging you to vote because it matters mm -hmm. so much. Um, yeah. So I've been involved, so I guess now, oh, 20 years. That's hard to believe, but yeah. Wow. That's wonderful. Thank I you. mean, can you hold hold it up again, Camille? Would you be able to? There we go. Canadians don't let American friends not vote. So send them votefromabroad.org. There we go. Wonderful. I wonder if that QR will work. Do you think it'll work? It, it might, but they have the, the website. Um, they'll be able to do it there too, right? So that's wonderful. And is there anything else you'd like to add, Camille? What's next for you? Um, well, yes, actually, there's one, there's one more, well, actually, two more things. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're so busy. <laughs> I have a, a Canadian friends who um, want to help. And there is a way you can help. Aside from getting your American friends to vote, you can write letters. If you go to mm -hmm. voteforward.org, uh, you can, they will give you a template for a letter. They'll give you names and addresses of people who were registered to vote before, who haven't voted in the last little while. And um, they will give you a script of what to write. And if you feel inclined, please go to voteforward.org and um, send your letters out to voters who maybe need a little nudge. And these are voters in the States. I've just, I've just done 40 letters to voters in Texas. Um, it's another way, Canadians can't do any phone banking, but you can send letters. So that's another good. And then the next thing I'm working on that I'm so excited about um, is um, my son is, who's a wonderful filmmaker is working with uh, an equally wonderful filmmaker, his friend Francesco Papetti, um, who's written a lovely script called The Architect's Dream. And my son is producing it, and they've asked me to star in it. So wonderful. <laughs> on that in October, and I'm very excited to be working with both of them. They're extremely talented. My son is Charlie Joe Mitchell, an extraordinarily talented young uh, director, filmmaker. He's been working in film production now since he graduated from UBC five years ago, and he's just been doing all kinds of amazing things um, in film production. And Francesco Papetti is a wonderful uh, writer also and film director. So I'm very excited about that. Yes. Wow, you're an inspiration. You haven't stopped and you keep going. It's wonderful, Camille. I love to have you back. Um, maybe have your son on as well. And yeah, so if people want more information, where can they go? Uh, for the um, vote for you, for you, to check you. <laughs> your 
Thank you. You know, I'm so bad. I know I, I should be better at all. I'm so bad at social media. Um, I have a Twitter. It's, it's L.A. Camille M. Um, and um, I, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm so bad. So I, I appreciate you having me on, Christy, because honestly, I have to... I have to get better at this. I really do. You will. And I, I want to do a shout out to Leslie Diana, the promotion people yes. for connecting us. And, and I really enjoyed interviewing you again. It just is such a blast. Okay. So, yes. Leslie is an amazing publicist. Her company is the promotion people. Uh, and um, I'm so grateful that she introduced us to Christine. It's always yes to see you and, and it always time flies by so thank you so much oh, you're welcome and i'll have this on air in the october show so we'll get the word out because the election's a member right so we have to remember yes <laughs> you're getting animated <laughs> i'm not an actor i'm just an interviewer but but thank you so much camille and yeah i'll be in touch soon and um yeah and i'm glad you told leslie diana i mean yeah, I meant to, but I never thought. I <laughs> also do lunch sometime. I would love that. We'll have a socially yeah. distant lunch. Yeah, we can do that. Yes, we'll make it work. Mass to mass meeting and <laughs> lunch. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, bye for now, Camille. Christine, you have a lovely day. You too. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>